I left Borat space. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hey, Hakim here. Uh, before the episode begins, I just want to let you know that apparently my camera only recorded 10 minutes of the footage. I didn't realize that. So the audio is still there, but the footage is not. Um, so this will be just a listening episode. So you just leave it up there and then just listen to it. Or you could just head over to our Spotify. That also works. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, continuing enjoying. C- continue enjoying the podcast. <laughs> Hello, welcome. This is a solo episode. And the main reason we're doing a solo episode is because uh, me and Harit, uh, we our schedules kind of got conflicted. And after talking to it about him, uh, I think it's best if I just do a solo episode today. So the solo episode is um, not much, but I do have um, something I want to talk about. And I feel like it's a a good thing or a, a a story that's um worth telling to people uh to those of you who don't know hi my name is hakim uh i am a <coughs> one of the co-hosts for borat space borat space is a podcast uh mostly about slice of life if you don't know about that uh we're going to talk about borat space a little bit and then we're going to talk about the story that i have uh so borat space moving forward we're trying to have a uh, website launch to sell our merchandise mainly and i feel like that's such a good move on our half because we have I, and, and i didn't knew this beforehand uh but we had like fans from brunei and from singapore that never had the chance to buy our merch because it was always locked within shopee malaysia sahaja so because of that we're gonna have our own website so you people from other countries are able to just buy our merchandise. I'm not sure how much the shipping fee would be. Uh, it's still within the works, but you know we will we will let you know. We will let you know. So for today's um, story or uh, for today's uh, episode, I believe that the best uh, type of story is a story that uh, that that is honest and that comes from you. And this is a story about how I started praying again. And I know there might be some people who are not into the, well, probably not on the same path or they believe in the same religion. But I believe that this story is, um, it could benefit everyone, even, even though you're not in the same religion, I guess. Sorry if I'm jittering or anything right now. And usually I have a buffer, and that buffer would be Harit. Um, but now it's just a, it's just a solo thing. So I have some notes uh, prepared here, and yeah, uh, we're gonna start off by um, by why I started praying, and um, this this is. Um, Mm, how do I say this? Huh? How do I say this? Okay, so I am well aware that sometimes in the podcast I talk about uh, my ex probably one or two many few times, but it's not because to know it's not because I'm not over her or anything and stuff like that. I feel personally that last relationship taught me really a lot of things. And it made me realize a lot of things that I should be focusing on or prioritizing next time for the next time I find a relationship and etc. And um, it was because of that breakup, I started praying again. So it all started around, um, I would say maybe, maybe around March to April. Uh, things were already looking uh, shaky for us, and um, it didn't it didn't go so well. Mainly also because the mom didn't like me, uh, so we we don't have to touch into that. I'm just saying it as it is. Later on in life, um, I find it quite taxing um, because I'm trying to seek for the mother's approval. 
and I didn't know how to do it. No matter what I did, no matter what I tried, uh, nothing seemed to work. And it felt very frustrating, and I felt very hopeless. I tried to keep my head up high. I tried to believe that things are going to be okay, but uh, it, it, it wasn't. Um, as the days goes by, I, I know that things are just getting worse and worse by the day. And um, I don't know why. Um, no, actually, no, I do know why I started praying. I think it started around in August. So because I didn't, I wasn't liked by my partner's parents, I thought that maybe it was because I didn't have enough finance, you know, to, to, to take care of them. And uh, maybe because I wasn't rich enough to take care of her and everything, etc. So, uh, and, and, and I, I felt worthless at the time. So I tried looking for a job. I wanted to find a simple job where I can have um, some income and while I pursue the business idea that I have. Uh, sorry, I might sneeze. <coughs> My bad for that. So, um, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't have income and I wanted to focus on this business that I had. Uh, so me and my ex-girlfriend, we bought a machine, an embroidery machine, and it, it was an expensive embroidery machine. And we were going to basically make um, embroidery t-shirts and sweaters, um, mainly for uh, anime lovers and everything, etc. But this business and this um, machine itself requires so much money. Like uh, the machine itself already cost around sixteen thousand, and to buy the threads would cost another four to five hundred ringgit, and to buy the blank T-shirts would already cost around seven hundred ringgit and etc. So there was just so much things to pay for. So I thought while well, I could have a nine to five job that pays me some money, so I can fund to the costs of making this business because I, I truly believed in that business idea at the time. And uh, no matter where or what I looked for, I don't know, for business, I, I'm sorry, for jobs, I, I couldn't find a job. And uh, I, I got tired. I got uh, really upset. And I remember the story of my friend Marha. Um, she told me about her husband. Her husband's name is Ayman. Hello, Ayman, if you're listening. Um, Ayman was at one point just like me. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go. And uh, I remember this one specific quote from Ayman. And Ayman said, I've tried everything else in this world except for praying. So when I did it, I, I felt wonders. And... For some reason, on that day in August, um, that quote just came into my head. So, I bentangkan my sejada. And then I solat asa. I remember it was asa. I solat asa. And then, right as I finished solat asa, and not going to lie, time I solat asa too, I, it wasn't it wasn't a full solat. You know, there were some parts I, I, I tak tahu macam tayat. Tanya akhir, I tak properly hafal um, Apa nak baca Time you rokok, I tak hafal It, it, it was a blur Tapi I, I, I nak cuba You know, just because you don't know something Doesn't mean I shouldn't try it, right? So it was a blur, so I tried it And the moment I dah Kasih salam terakhir I I tiba-tiba dapat a text From my friend And he offered me a job And it was at that time, at that point of time, I nampak betapa beautifulnya Allah planned something out for you. And I was shocked. And I was happy. And I remember I told my girlfriend at the time, and she was excited for me as well. 
So inside my head, like, okay, this is this is gonna be great. This is gonna be this is gonna be something that uh, will help me sustain myself while I sustain my business. And it was a very. It was this was in August, and this was August. I I worked there August until January. Um, August till January was one of the most exhausting periods of my life mainly because after a nine to five job i go back home and then i have to make content for myself on tiktok at a time and i also had to you know work on the business so there was a lot of time used just to fund the business but i i was motivated you know i I wanted to be my girlfriend at the time. I, I wanted her to be my wife at the time. So what is this little sacrifice for marrying the woman of your dreams, right? So that's what um, that's what I did. I worked and worked and worked and worked. Um, but after I got my job, I wasn't really praying as much. It was... It was not on and off. It was mainly off. Just because I got what I wanted, I stopped praying. And I admit to myself about that. And later on, me and my girlfriend's relationship got more shaky. Within two months, we could feel that we were losing the peace and tranquility that we had with each other. It was um, constant doubts. It was uh, anxiety. And I felt like at the time, we were not bringing the best for each other. And I, I was just confused. I was so upset. Uh, this, is, this is around the time where I learned about uh, attachment issues. You guys, if you guys listen to the podcast long enough, you know how much I love attachment, talking about attachment issues. So this was the around time where I learned about attachment issues. And I realized that my attachment issues and her attachment issue is not compatible. Like it, 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 it would cause this anxiety and everything and stuff like that. Mine was an anxious attachment issue. She was an avoiding attachment issue. So there are so many hiccups along the way. By the way, just, just want to point out like... Um, no one's attachment issue is bad, all right? Just because you have an anxious attachment issue doesn't mean you are the best person in the whole wide world because a lot of anxious people like to think that, oh, they're so caring and charismatic, chill the fuck down. <laughs> and just because your partner or your friend has an avoidant attachment issue, that doesn't mean they're the worst person in the world, all right? They feel fear. They just show their strength in a different way. Both are not um to say healthy right but both are also not bad at the same time they 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 have their pros and cons so but yeah i i was not happy being an anxious attachment style and i remember during this time also i spent a lot of my time reworking on myself i was this was also the time that i went to therapy and uh talked it out with my therapist um, I went my therapy. A lot of people have been asking about therapy. My therapy sessions are always at KPJ Damansara. It will be pricey at first, and then after a while, the the two the fee goes down if you don't have um what what was the word, uh, if you don't have medication. So yeah, uh, I started going to therapy, and I started to uh, try to fix my attachment issues. Try to figure out why am I so emotional and illogical at the same time. I felt like I hated myself because I couldn't accept the duality that I have within myself where sometimes I'm very, I'm very emotional and sometimes I'm very logical. And uh, that, that, uh, that, that hurt me for the longest time. I'm not going to lie. I kind of forgot about this part until I'm like retelling it right now. So I'm kind of good. It, it, it's kind of like therapy for me. So yay me. <laughs> so yeah. And I, I, wait, is it still here? Mm. So I I had a book and inside this book was literally me just 
learning everything I can about my anxious attachment style. And it was just me reworking my attachment style. And I remember just telling my partner at the time that uh, you don't have to change who you are if you're comfortable with who you are. But I want to change who I am because I'm not comfortable being um, anxious, uh, anxiously attached. So I remember how much how much hard work that I did. And uh, yeah. Hold on. Let me take a vape break. So yeah, um, so while everything was going on, I remember feeling so overwhelmed so easily, mainly because I have to think about my financials, I have to think about the business, I have to think about me as a content creator, I have to think about um, the business, I'm not sure if I said that already, and I have to think about um, fixing my attachment issues, that there were... There was a lot on my plate. My mind was actively racing 24-7 and I didn't know what to do. This also led me to have very bad insomnia as well. It led me to always be thinking about things and my body is in a constant state of stress. And this led me to have like a, not just like normal insomnia, but stress-induced insomnia where my body doesn't know what time is rest time and my body just kept on going at things 24 7. so yeah it got it got really scary and around november me and my girlfriend decided to to break up mainly because of the fact that uh there there, there was something private going on okay i'm not going to share that on the internet but there was something private going on and it involved the mom and we couldn't risk it anymore so we decided to we decided to break up and while breaking up i noticed that my girlfriend really enjoyed the space that she had meaning that sorry my ex-girlfriend at this point my ex-girlfriend at this point really enjoyed the space that she had and she started to take um, more space away from me and um, from my point of view from my point of view it was also very confusing because there were times where it seems that she wants me back and also there were times where she wants her distance it it was a very hard thing to navigate for me and i'm not saying that she's a bad person for that i mean this is probably what she felt during that time no not sorry not what she felt that time probably what she needed that time probably she needs some reassurance sometimes and just need her own space I'm, I'm not sure i can't speak on her behalf i can only speak on mine and this is just what i felt and what i saw and at the time i felt so loss i felt so confused i remember hating myself because i thought i put myself in this situation i told myself that this is all my fault and if i worked really hard when i was young I would probably amount to a lot of cash right now and the mom would accept me. That's that's what I thought at the time. And it was a very hard time to navigate with the breakup and everything and stuff like that. And and sometimes sometimes I don't want to admit that we broke up. And at the time also, I guess I was very afraid dealing with the thought that she might not love me anymore. So I gaslighted myself. And I told myself that this is all my fault. And um, if I want to make a change, I have to work three times as hard. So that's kind of what I did. I worked really 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 hard and um, I don't think it was a healthy amount of heart I remember just having a wallpaper of 
my ex-girlfriend. And I put the quote there. This is what you lost for being broke. I wanted to punish myself more. Because inside my head, if I punish myself, I will do the work. It was not a fun time inside my head at time. And yeah, I, it was hard to navigate. There was this one day where I don't know why, but the, I got a panic attack mainly because I kept thinking as time passes by, if I'm not making one or five ringgit every single minute, I am, I don't know, probably five years away from getting back together with my ex-girlfriend. And that was not a very healthy thought for me to have at a time. But that's what I had at the time. And I tried to work harder and harder and harder and harder every passing minute I just felt more stress I felt more scared and then I broke down I, I felt so much fear inside my heart my chest felt so tight I didn't remember how to breathe I kind of lost my mind a little bit, not going to lie. It's not a pretty look, if I'm being honest. And I remember telling my ex-girlfriend that I had three panic attacks and she wanted to know more about it, but I, I, I didn't want to. Um, something about talking to avoiding people is that they have a hard time relating to your um, emotions. They try to brush it off just the way they brush off their own emotions. That's how they cope. So they want you to cope the same way. But for anxious people, sometimes we just want to, we just want to talk about it. We don't need anyone to give us a pat on the back sometimes. Sometimes we just want to talk about it. And she told me that you know I could just talk about it. And I talked about it. And I remember after telling her about it, she told me that, okay, maybe we should just cancel the agreement that we had where we come back together. And at that point in time, I broke down crying. Because inside my head, I'm like, isn't, isn't all my hard work for this? Are you telling me I went through all of this stress and then now you're telling me that it's not worth anything? Like you, 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 we're not getting back together? Anything, stuff like that? It felt so conflicted inside my head. And again, I don't know what she was experiencing, but this is just what I'm experiencing. And I remember just feeling so lost. So, so, so lost. And I remembered about my friend telling me that, you know, the, the, the quote where, the quote of my friend where he tried everything and maybe prayer is next. And I remember that when I wanted a job, I prayed for it once and then Allah gave it to me. So I thought, the next best thing is to pray and hope the mom accepts me because then all of this, we can leave all of this behind. That makes sense to me, you know, at the time. And that's what I did. I remember praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. But the mom still didn't like me. No matter what I did. And it got so frustrating. And I punished myself more. And I told myself, if I consistently prayed from August till now, I wouldn't be in this position. I did this to myself. 
Why did I do that to myself? You're so stupid, Hakim. And then I started guilt praying. Because inside my head that, okay, maybe maybe there's a delay to this. But if, if, I, if I keep on trying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying, maybe, maybe Allah will open the mom's heart. Maybe, maybe then I would be accepted. And at one point, uh, something really bad happened. And um, I think that's when episode six comes in. If you guys have seen episode six of Borat Space, I've talked about that a whole lot more. But yeah, and and then I lost it. I was not at the right headspace. I felt like I was in deep shit, and there was no one to blame besides myself. Now there's a good way to use that quote you know like there's no one else to blame besides yourself but there is a way to also use it where you just hate yourself for no reason at all a good way to use the quote of um there's no one to blame um it's all my fault it's kind of like much um when you come late to a meeting well, there's nothing else to blame it was my fault you know, that's fair that's fair. That's just taking acknowledgement and wanting to be better, right? But this, this was not an acknowledge. This was not an acknowledgement to be better. This was just me hating myself because inside my head I lost the woman of my dreams because I I I I, I was doing nothing when I was young. This wasn't me trying to be better. This was me trying to punish myself because I thought I deserved that punishment. I don't know why I did that. I probably thought, probably thought that if I punish myself enough, maybe my partner would see that and they would know that I'm trying and their heart would open up for me. Maybe. It, it's hard for me to recollect why or what I felt during that time. But I guess that's why you have journals. I have a lot of journals. And I'm pretty sure I wrote it somewhere down in the journal. But yeah. Somewhere around January, me and her stopped talking to each other. And... I don't know why. That be I saw a quote online saying that if you love someone, then truly the best thing you can do for them is pray for them. So we were no longer talking to each other. And I don't think it was right for me to talk to her as well because probably the mom that can suka. So, I just talked about her with Allah. And this is when I started praying again. I berdoa aja ke Allah. I surat subuh, surat zuhur, surat asar, maghrib, isya. I cakap pasal dia je kepada Allah. That was January. January was still a hard time for me to navigate. And then we got to February. February, I don't know why, but... Um, not sure if I should say this. Should I? I don't know. Okay. I, 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 I made a gift for my ex. And I wanted to give it to her for Valentine's Day. This is, you know, me talking about it again, realize that how, how hard it is for me to move on. And I don't know why. I, I swear to God to you, I don't know why it was so hard for me to move on. Maybe part of me believed that she was the one. And part of me also believed that this was my fault. 
So I have to make up for it. And if I don't make up for it, that means all the pain that I went through was for nothing. Probably that's what I felt at the time. Wow. Oh, I'm having so much revelations talking to you guys about this. Okay, all right. Here we go on, eh? Here we go on, eh? And I started praying and praying and praying more. And I remember calling my friend um, Amma that night after I made the gift uh, for my ex-girlfriend. And I cried. It was still such a shaky time during this time. And... Uh, my friend said, uh, Hakim, with all due respect, I think you don't know how to take care of yourself. And that broke my heart. It made me marajo with him a little bit, not just with him, but with everyone. And that's when I kept things just to myself. I didn't want to talk to anyone because I felt like they all going to think that I don't know how to take care of myself. And as a man, when you hear that, when you hear your friends say that you don't know how to take care of yourself, it uh, it kind of ruins not just your masculinity, but also your pride. And you, you just have this feeling where you want to prove them wrong. So, yeah. But I didn't hate him for it. I was mad because he was right. So, I kept more things to myself. But as I kept more things to myself, I realized that I'm speaking to Allah a whole lot more. And I'm speaking to Him every single day. I'm talking to Him about how much I miss someone. I'm talking to Him how I want him to take care of someone for me every single day. And you might sound, you might think that, you know, it, it was crazy, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I truly thought that it was going to work out. But uh, around this time, my prayers are, are much more consistent. But also, I have to mention um, during this consistent amount of prayer, I I still didn't know what to properly baca time ta'ya ahi and everything and stuff like that. It was only after I saw this um this TikTok video that came on my FYP. This TikTok video that came on my FYP yang cakap pasal tahajud. Not gonna lie, I wasn't really sure what tahajud was at the time. And then they explain um, that Dajud is a voluntary prayer performed in the last third of the night. And uh, it's considered to be the most rewarding acts of worship in Islam because you woke up from your bed in slumber just to, just to pray to Allah. Um, there's so many significance of Dajud in the Quran and also in Hadith. Um, Nabi Muhammad Wasallam also recommended it obviously <laughs> um and when someone told me that tahajjud prayers are prayers that you make when you want to wish to come true uh, that was the night that i woke up and i hafal hari tu ga macam mana nak cakap semua benda ni macam mana nak Jadi nak kasih tayar ahi baca ni baca tu baca semua tu. I I hafal malam tu ga. I jujur lah memang I hafal semua tu. Bukan sebab Allah at the time. You no, know, I I wanted to be on Allah's good side so I can get something in return. Honestly, me as an honest human being, that's what I felt at the time. I'm ashamed to admit that right now. 
Tapi tak apa That's what I felt Tajud, tajud, tajud I ingat time Ramadan tu Time bulan Ramadan I rasa Dua malam je I skip tajud And Doa, 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 doa And then later on I belajar juga Yang kalau macam um, Kalau You pray for something And you tak dapat Maybe it's because You still ada dosa Yang you tak minta Allah maafkan And after that There was this one ustaz Ajar apa ni Cakap Yang kalau nak Kalau betul nak cuba Allah maafkan Um uh, Selawat Astaghfirullahaladzim And I macam Oh okay Berapa kali Ustaz I tanya Ustaz tu that time And then Ustaz tu kata Oh 10 ribu kali 10 ribu And I thought he was kidding Tapi tak ada serious by 10 ribu kali And I remember There were just some days Or some nights When I'm driving in the car I turn off the music And I just selawat je Or oh, when I'm alone at home I tengah baring atas katil Tak tali nak tidur Selawat je Because that's that's all I could do That's all I could do Selawat, 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 tajud Selawat, 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 tajud And also, this is just, this is just me saying I, Okay Aku yang Tak pernah properly belajar macam nak solat pun Solat betul-betul And minta daripada Allah Kalau ada And this is my doa My doa is Ya Allah, if she's not meant for me Please make her meant for me Ya Allah, if she's not the best for me Please make her the best for me Ya Allah, allow us to spend together here and also for the rest of eternity. That's that, that was my dua every time you night. And that's when I started that's when I started to learn more about Islam. And there was also a point in my time where I said, Damacham, why is it taking it? Why is it taking so many tajuds and so many du'as uh, for me to to get there, to to get what I want? There, there was a point in time where I was like, um, why is it taking so long? Why, why, what, 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 what's causing me to have to do this a lot of times just for me to get this wish? Kan? Macam udah banggang, kan? And then literally the next day, the core of my FYP, I did this one Ustaza explain. Yang sometimes you are told to do things repeatedly because after doing it repeatedly, then it becomes a habit. And then I broke down and cried. Because at that point of time, it felt like this woman that came into my life was, yes, for me to have some beautiful memories with her. And yes, also for me to learn a few things about myself and learn about learn more about the things that I value in a relationship. Yes, yes, that, that is a given. But when she was taken away Allah used my love for her for for me to talk to him for me to learn about praying for me to angkat sejadah doa angkat sejadah doa angkat sejadah doa and not gonna lie not gonna lie I know there's probably some of you yang kat sini yang tengah dengar yang fikir macam bapak lah banyak yang dia cakap dengan Allah pasal dia punya ex dia, dia tak dia tak move on ke apa and that's that's fine kot korang manusia korang manusia tapi Allah SWT je the only person the only being I know and no matter how many times I want to bring up something that hurts me that makes me feel small that breaks my heart he will never reject listening to me. And it's not just me feeling this way. There's so many hadiths and so many surah 
explaining how he will always listen to you. Listen to what's in your heart. Listen to your problems. And all he asks is just for you to say, Ya Allah, I need you. I need to talk to you. And that's when I realized that when my friend Amma cakap macam I tak hati jaga diri and I nak simpan things to myself, that's, that's, that's the biggest sign that he loves you. When he pushes everyone away so you have no one else to talk to besides him. And honestly, who cares about other human beings sangat pun? Who cares if other human beings want to talk to you sangat ke I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to have. It's nice to have. But it's not. Oh, you don't feel so lost when you can't talk to another human being. But you feel so lost when you can't talk to Allah. And that's what I felt at the time. And I'm not going to lie. As months pass and pass and pass and pass and pass and pass, I, I, I never really truly understood again, like, why, why my wish of having this person in my life did, did not come back, you know? Like, it didn't come through. And then, I don't know why, I said inside my heart, Ya Allah, should I just let her go? And then, Ya Allah, my hati rasa ringan gila. Ringan sangat. Even time I, I solat istikara, solat istikara, solat istikara is another type of solat that you can do when you're undecisive about something. Dan aku rasa ringan sangat after aku cakap yang aku nak let go. And I don't know why. At that point of time, I didn't know why. Tapi, even though I wanted to let go, I wanted to apologize for everything that I did. You know, I, I wanted to give it one last shot. You know what they say? Macam, you usah her, and then you tengok macam mana Allah respond. So, my usah her was that I not send one last paragraph to my ex. We haven't been speaking at all. I haven't been speaking at all. Eh? So, I not send one last paragraph of me just apologizing for everything that I did. And after I sent that, she just told me to move on. That's all she said. And it broke my heart. And I didn't get her in the end. And if you ask me two years ago, I would blame myself again. I would hit myself again. Everything is a trap. But that, that was me two years ago. Me then, when I saw that message, I cried. Yes, Mima. I cried. I rasa sedih sangat. I tak tahu kenapa she had to act so cold towards me at the time. Again, she's not here to defend her actions. I'm just seeing what I'm seeing. Yeah? You, do get, you guys don't have to take sides. You guys just dengar je the story, okay? I don't want to hear some dumb comments about what to do. Oh, she's just a horrible person. We're not trying to out people here, okay? We're trying to learn something. That's all. And at the time, I was sedih sangat. And I merajuk for a while. I merajuk, I thinking like, why I spent so much time praying for this person but this person cakap dengan aku nicely pun tak boleh nak say thank you ke apa semua tu pun tak boleh what what was it all for at the time and of course I cakap dengan Allah lah dengan benda ni kan and I couldn't figure it out but the only thing I knew was that I rest is a day. And I'm raju. And I tarik diri I daripada solat. And the reason I tarik diri I daripada solat sekejap because I rasa what she said to me was so 
uncalled for. And inside my head, macam, kau ni tak tahu ke aku yang selama ni doa untuk kau? Harap kau okay, harap kau alright. Okay, fine. Fine. I cannot stop doa untuk kau. So I stop praying. I stop praying because I know myself that kalau I solat, I akan tersebutkan nama dia, I akan minta Allah jaga dia. So I, I nak break that habit. Tak nak Maju ni pasal Manusia kan bodoh <laughs> So I stop Tak nak And then I I didn't I didn't pray for her I didn't ask for her Punya tu apa semua tu I just Just biarkan je Biar je dia And then A few months ago I found my journals And then bila I book up my journals, apa semua tu, that's when I said, damn, macam, wow, there were so many things that were not compatible with us. But I just wanted to look at the good and only the good. Yes, we all settle in a relationship. Not everyone is going to be perfect. There are some things that you're going to settle for. But from the way... I wrote in the journals I realized that maybe the both of us were settling too much with each other I settled for her qualities that she didn't like about uh, sorry I settled for her qualities that I didn't like and she settled for my qualities that she didn't like a little bit too much it felt like right there and then I'd have provided proof to myself of why we didn't work out. But I had to kill at the time. And then, now we're here in August. So, where am I with my prayers right now? Where am I with Allah right now? I, I am happy to say that I have started praying again. Start jaga my solat a whole lot more, and it was all mainly because of this um, uh, this one thing uh, where we I was at a tournament though with my friends, a one piece card tournament, and when I was there, tengok macam, kenapa kawan kawan aku macam senang je menang ya, aku macam susah je nak menang main games, ah oh, ya Allah kenapa? And then something clicked inside of me, macam, huh? Aku macam sedar tak? Every time aku kalah, aku ingat pada Allah. Cuba kata, I change the change the the apa ni, the method. Where sekarang ni, every time aku menang, aku nak ingat pada Allah 100 more times. Dan Alhamdulillah, <laughs> peluang peluang nak menang tu became much more clearer. <laughs> and And I started Like um, start jaga solat I in a sense of solat subuh and um, maghrib isha. It, it was hard to much um, get back the momentum. Good job. And and I'm really happy, sangat because right now when I'm praying, I'm praying for myself, praying for my friends and my family, and for the people that care about me and the people that love me. And the people that accept me for who I am, and I'm praying because I want to, because I want to talk to Allah, because I want to do this wajib thing. And I I know like, kau buat benda wajib is it something for you to much show off? Just <laughs> think aku, but. It has been a crazy journey for me to be up at this point, and I don't think I would have made it if it wasn't for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It wasn't for the friends that He placed my way, the beautiful people that He placed my way. I lost a relationship, yes. 
But in return, in return, I got this relationship with Allah that that nothing in this world could ever replace. You have no idea how much I rely on Him, how much I adore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much I love Him. That I'm trying every day to be a little bit better, but it takes time. And I think I love the fact that Allah knows it takes time and He accepts me while I'm taking my time. So, yeah. If there's anything I would like to share in this podcast, this solo podcast episode, there are two things. One, when you get in a relationship, make sure make sure Allah is involved in that relationship. Because if that relationship is just going to put you further away from Allah, then that could be a punishment in itself. I noticed at one point in my relationship is that I loved my ex-girlfriend more than I loved myself or more than I loved Allah. And that's shameful to admit, but I'm proud to have learned from it. So, if you're in a relationship, please, 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 please make sure Allah is involved. Okay? Second, I used to have panic attacks. I don't anymore. That's the only reason I'm saying this. I used to have panic attacks. And I don't anymore. I've learned and grown. And I worked on myself. More than I thought was possible. And third. Finding your connection with Allah. Is is a privilege. And to some people it's called a hidayah. That's more than idea. That if you're asking me, there were so many points of time where I just boleh pergi club, mabuk, cuba nak lupakan my pain and everything, etc. But I didn't. I nak rapatkan diri I dengan Allah. And honestly, I feel like the only hidayah you need is the fact that you not. Kalau you not rapat dengan Allah, rapat dengan Allah. If you tak nak, tak nak. And I faham. I faham. Kat dunia ni sometimes ada banyak sangat distraction. There's um, this, there's that, there's this and that. And then kalau you dah declare nak rapat diri dengan Allah, you kena jauhkan daripada benda-benda ni. Yeah, tapi benda-benda ni best. Fun. I mean, how long does fast? How long does fun last anyway? What's so important about things being fun compared to being at peace? I have fun, but I don't think it's in a way where. Nah, sorry. That that was sounds a little bit too judgmental. I wanted to say I have fun, but not in the way where it's but also but that sounds a little bit too judgmental. It's 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 all right. It's all right to be a sinner. Most majority of the people in Jana are sinners who repent. You rasa wasala and you na minta maaf for Allah and try to be better, do it. Satu kali ke, sepuluh kali ke, seribu kali ke, dua ribu kali ke. Allah pandang usaha tu more than you know. Cuba je. Cuba je, that's all. Sebab 
kat neraka nanti tu kena faham eh sugar neraka wujud tau and sugar neraka wujud for a reason sugar neraka wujud because of your own actions good actions lead you to sugar bad actions lead you to neraka meaning that you have free will you have a choice to either return to Allah and worship Allah alone or don't worship Allah and be a slave to money women men or anything in between the choice is yours this is Hakim from Pora Space on episode 81 a solo podcast <laughs> I hope you guys learn a few things. I hope I wasn't rambling too much. And I hope you guys are, you know, you're able to chill and learn a few things. Thanks for tuning in and um thank you so much for supporting Bora Space. I really appreciate it. Take care. <laughs> oh, hari besi buat muah kan. Mwah. That's so gay. <laughs> Bye.